In the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, the world celebrated as a treaty was signed ending what was to be the war to end all wars, World War I. A year later, on what came to be known as Armistice Day, Americans came together to remember and honor the sacrifices of the men and women who served during the war. But un unrest grew again in much of the world, and with it, the painful realization that World War I would not be our last war. After the Second World War, which was even bloodier than the first, Armistice Day continued to be observed. In 1954, Congress changed the name of the holiday to Veterans Day to include veterans of all United States wars. Today, we honor the service and sacrifice of our armed forces in the past as well as in the present on Veterans Day. Today, the official national ceremony takes place at Arlington Cemetery at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. All the branches of the military are represented by a color guard, which then executes a present arms at, a, at the tomb, and a presidential wreath is placed on the graves. A bugler then plays taps. Though I did not enter military service, I hold great respect for those who have and those who do. Our son-in-law just retired after 20 years serving in the Army Special Forces. My father was a plank owner in the Navy on the USS Larson at the end of World War II. Just a year or two ago, I recaptured this picture from his service, which is dated 1946. This past Sunday, we paused to honor all our veterans during worship services with a tribute. I really appreciate the way Suntree does this every year. It's truly moving. As each of our veterans' pictures flashes up on the screen, we see some of them in dress blues, others in fatigues, some standing next to the plane they flew or the tank they worked on, others at an active desk post or a medic station, each one doing what they were trained to do and to do well. And of course, we all enjoy comparing their younger picture on the left side of the screen to their uh, more mature picture to the right. Some of us change appearance more than others over the years. Pastor Annette then asks our veterans to all stand together and we applaud their service. The percentage of the Sun Tree congregation standing there, even during a COVID service, was truly overwhelming. Not only because they served their country, but as I looked out at the faces, so many of them are the very ones whose self-sacrificial, send me attitudes are even now actively involved in ministry and in service right here in our community. What are we thanking you as a veteran for today? Why are we honoring you? The United States asks a lot of its military men and women. We ask that they fight effectively yet appropriately, passionately and yet justly, and always in a principled and professional manner. In a word, we expect our military to fight honorably. What we expect of our men and women in uniform seems to be an impossible task, really a paradox. We commission them on our behalf to fight as peacemakers. In the end, we know that war is not the answer, but only a temporary means of slowing the worst evils of a fallen world. When a soldier, a pilot, or a crewman comes home, we celebrate with their family. Don't you love seeing those surprise visits when a dad or mom walks into the 10-year-old's fourth grade classroom, straight off a military transport plane, and scoops the child up into their arms? But we also mourn with those parents and spouses and families when their loved one does not return alive and well. While still teenagers, many of you made your first big adult decision. Many have made that decision before you, many will make it after you. Before my time, many had that decision made for them. Today honors everyone who has made that decision. Today honors everyone who must live with that decision, and today honors all those who in various ways have sacrificed because of your decision. Thank you, veterans, for having taken up arms, not on behalf of yourselves, but on behalf of your country. Thank you for protecting this land from all threats, foreign and domestic. This is never an easy task. You have all faced life-changing hurdles and sacrifices on and off the battlefield. As Christians, we desire to keep an accurate perspective of the sacrifices made in light of the gospel, in light of the ultimate solution to war because war takes its toll, not only the threat of injury or death in combat, but also the, the relational traumas that often accompanies long deployments, multiple deployments, or inconvenient deployments. 
How often do we hear the story of a serviceman who missed his first child's birth back here in the, in the States, or the servicewoman who catches the score of her son's first baseball game in a video conference at 3 a.m. in the morning Saudi time? Some families lose their soldiers, and some soldiers lose their family. Yet this nation's brave military and their equally heroic families carry on in the face of even these difficulties. And so as the Apostle Paul urged Timothy, let us be people of prayer for all those in authority and especially those who bear and have borne the responsibility of our nation's sword. In Romans chapter 13 and verse 7, Paul writes this, Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. We honor our nation's veterans by remembering their sacrifices. We also honor our nation's veterans by thanking them but we also honor their lives by how we live our own. We've been born into an amazing country with unique and exceptional opportunities. Let's not squander our God-given gifts and personal talents. Instead, let's serve others, serve our community, serve our nation, and most importantly, serve our God. Happy Veterans Day to each of you who served.